Good morning. Welcome to Grace Lutheran Church. We're glad that you're here. We have a, a skeleton crew here this morning to do the worship service, but we know that there are a ton of you out there watching and worshiping with us. Welcome. Uh, just a few things. Uh, be prepared to worship. I dare you to stand up and sit down wherever you are. That's something we like to do here. Make sure you sing along, you pray, um, and participate as you would if you are here. Uh, a couple of other just notes in regards to the service. The chat window is open, so if you would like to share a greeting or peace, you are certainly welcome to do that. And uh, since it is church, I wanted to take a second and talk about the offering. Uh, go ahead and open up another window so when we get to that point in the service, you can click over to our webpage and give a gift and stay on track and help keep us on track as well. Again, welcome to worship at Grace Lutheran Church. Please stand as you are able. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, who forgives all our sin, whose mercy endures forever. Amen. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfect, perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Gracious God, have mercy on us. We confess that we have turned from you and given ourselves into the power of sin. We are truly sorry and humbly repent. In your compassion, forgive us our sins, known and unknown, things we have done and things we have failed to do. Turn us again to you and uphold us by your Spirit so, so that we may live, live and serve, serve you in newness of life, life through Jesus, Jesus Christ, our, our Savior, Savior and Lord. Lord. Amen. Amen. God, who is rich in mercy, loved us even when we were dead in sin and made us alive together with Christ. By grace, you have been saved. In the name of Jesus Christ, your sins are forgiven. Almighty God, strengthen you with power of the Holy Spirit, that Christ may live in your hearts through faith. Amen. 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 Oh, 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 oh. 
grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. pray. Bend your ear to our prayers, Lord Christ, and come among us. By your gracious life and death for us, bring light into the darkness of our hearts and anoint us with your Spirit, for you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. A reading from 1 Samuel. The Lord said to Samuel, How long will you grieve over Saul? I have rejected him from being king over Israel. Fill your horn with oil and set out. I will send you to Jesse, the Bethlehemite, for I have provided for myself a king among his sons. Samuel said, How can I go? If Saul hears of it, he will kill me. And the Lord said, Take a heifer with you and say, I have come to sacrifice to the Lord. Invite Jesse to the sacrifice, and I will show you what you shall do. And you shall anoint for me the one whom I name to you. Samuel did what the Lord commanded and came to Bethlehem. The elders of the city came to meet him trembling and saying, Do you come peaceably? He said, Peaceably, I have come to sacrifice to the Lord. Sanctify yourselves and come with me to the sacrifice. And he sanctified Jesse and his sons and invited them to the sacrifice. When they came, he looked on Eliab and thought, Surely the Lord's anointed is now before the Lord. But the Lord said to Samuel, Do not look on his appearance or on the height of his stature because I have rejected him. For the Lord does not see as mortals see. They look on the outward appearance, but the Lord looks on the heart. Then Jesse called Abinadab and made him pass before Samuel. He said, neither has the Lord chosen this one. Then Jesse made Shammah pass by, and he said, neither has the Lord chosen this one. Jesse made seven of his sons pass before Samuel, and Samuel said to Jesse, The Lord has not chosen any of these. Samuel said to Jesse, Are all your sons here? And he said, There remains yet the youngest, but he is keeping the sheep. And Samuel said to Jesse, Send and bring him, for we will not sit down until he comes. He sent and brought him in. Now he was ruddy and had beautiful eyes and was handsome. The Lord said, Rise and anoint him, for this is the one. Then Samuel took the horn of oil and anointed him in the presence of his brothers. And the Spirit of the Lord came mightily upon David from that day forward. Samuel then set out and went to Ramah. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God.
King of love, my shepherd is, whose goodness faileth ever. I nothing lack if I am his, and A reading from Ephesians. Once you were darkness, but now in the Lord you are light. Live as children of light. For the fruit of the light is found in all that is good and right and true. Try to find out what is pleasing to the Lord. Take no part in the unfruitful works of darkness, but instead expose them. For it is shameful even to mention what such people do secretly. But everything exposed by the light becomes visible, for everything that becomes visible is light. Therefore it says, Sleeper, awake, rise from the dead, and Christ will shine on you. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. Please stand as you are able for the reading of the gospel. Return to the Lord your God, for he is gracious and merciful, slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love. The Holy Gospel according to John. Glory, Glory to, to you, you O Lord. Lord. As Jesus walked along, he saw a man blind from birth. His disciples asked him, Rabbi, who sinned, this man or his parents, that he was born blind? Jesus answered, Neither this man nor his parents sinned. He was born blind so that God's works might be revealed in him. We must work the works of him who sent me while it is day. Night is coming when no one can work. As long as I am in the world, I am the light of the world. When he had said this, he spat on the ground and made mud with the saliva and spread the mud on the man's eyes. 
saying to him, go wash in the pool of Siloam, which means sent. Then he went and washed and came back able to see. The neighbors and those who had seen him before as a beggar began to ask, is this not the man who used to sit and beg? Some were saying, it is he. Others were saying, no, but it is someone like him. He kept saying, I am the man. But they kept asking him, then how were your eyes opened? He answered, the man called Jesus made mud, spread it on my eyes, and said to me, go to Siloam and wash. Then I went and washed and received my sight. They said to him, where is he? He said, I do not know. They brought to the Pharisees the man who had formerly been blind. Now it was a Sabbath day when Jesus made the mud and opened his eyes. Then the Pharisees also began to ask him how he had received his sight. He said to them, he put mud on my eyes, then I washed and now I see. Some of the Pharisees said, this man is not from God for he does not observe the Sabbath. But others said, how can a man who is a sinner perform such signs? And they were divided. So they said again to the blind man, what do you say about him? It was your eyes he opened. He said, he is a prophet. The Jews did not believe that he had been blind and had received his sight until they called the parents of the man who had received his sight and asked them, is this your son who you say was born blind? How then does he now see? His parents answered, we know that this is our son and that he was born blind, but we do not know how it is that now he sees, nor do we know who opened his eyes. Ask him, he is of age, he will speak for himself. His parents said this because they were afraid. For the Jews had already agreed that anyone who confessed Jesus to be the Messiah would be put out of the synagogue. Therefore, his parents said, he is of age, ask him. So for the second time, they called the man who had been born blind, and they said to him, give glory to God. We know that this man is a sinner. He answered, I do not know whether he is a sinner. One thing I do know, that though I was blind, now I see. They said to him, what did he do to you? How did he open your eyes? He answered them, I have told you already, and you would not listen. Why do you want to hear it again? Do you also want to become his disciples? Then they reviled him, saying, You are his disciple, but we are disciples of Moses. We know that God has spoken to Moses, but as for this man, we do not know where he comes from. The man answered, Here is an astonishing thing. You do not know where he comes from, and yet he opened my eyes. We know that God does not listen to sinners, but he does listen to one who worships him and obeys his will. Never since the world began has it been heard that anyone opened the eyes of a person born blind. If this man were not from God, he could do nothing. They answered him, you were born entirely in sins, and are you trying to teach us? And they drove him out. Jesus heard that they had driven him out, and when he, when he found him, he said, do you believe in the Son of Man? He answered, and who is he, sir? Tell me, so that I may believe in him. Jesus said to him, you have seen him, and the one speaking with you is he. He said, Lord, I believe, and he worshiped him. Jesus said, I came into this world for judgment, so that those who do not see may see, and those who do see may become blind. Some of the Pharisees near him heard this and said to him, Surely we are not blind, are we? Jesus said to them, If you were blind, you would not have sin. 
but now that you say we see, your sin remains. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise Praise to you, O Christ. You may be seated, and Elizabeth has the children's sermon. Good morning. I'd like to invite all the children to come in close to whatever screen you're looking at, whether it's your TV or a computer or a phone, but come in close. Today for the children's sermon, we're going to gather on the baptismal font, or today we're going to call it the the Pool of Siloam. And I'm going to read you the story. Jesus met a blind man on the road. He told the blind man, I'm Jesus. Some people call me the light of the world. I'll bring light to you for the first time by helping you see. No, Jesus, the other people said. This man must have done something wrong or he wouldn't be blind. But Jesus knew that the people were wrong. Jesus knew what to do to heal the blind man. First, he took some dirt from the ground and added some of his own spit. He mixed it until it made mud. Finally, he pressed the mud over the blind man's eyes. Jesus told the blind man to go and wash his eyes in the pool of Siloam. Splash, splash, splash. The blind man washed the blood off of his eyes. The very first thing the man saw in the water was himself. The second thing he saw was the light. Jesus' words, I will give you light. Many people were shocked by what Jesus did, and some people were mad because Jesus could do what they could not do. So they asked the man who used to be blind many questions. How can you see, they asked him. Jesus made me see, he said. That's not true, they replied. Yes, it is. Jesus is a holy man. Really? Really, Jesus could heal you too? Some people were afraid that Jesus could heal people. They closed their eyes and didn't want to see any more about Jesus. Go away, they said to the man who could see now. He went away. Jesus heard about what had happened and went to find the man. When Jesus found him, Jesus did not tell the man to go away. Jesus stayed with him. The man believed Jesus was the light of the world. So Jesus put mud over the man's eyes and told him to go and wash in the pool. So he washed his eyes and he was healed and he could see the light. Jesus used ordinary things and ordinary people to heal the world. We get muddy sometimes. We play in the mud or in the dirt outside. And when we get dirty and muddy, we have to go wash off. And when we wash off, we remember our baptism. So I want you to wash your hands today. I know you've probably been washing your hands a lot this week to keep safe and keep healthy. But when you wash your hands today or you take a bath tonight, I want you to wash in the water and remember your baptism and make the sign of the cross on your forehead so that you remember that Jesus uses water to heal you and to give you light. Let's say a prayer together. Wonderful, loving God, Thank you for the times to laugh and to play in the mud, and for the times to wash up and be clean. Help us to stay stay safe and healthy. Amen. I'm glad we can be together, even though it's in this fashion. It's, it's good to be here with you. The text that we have for today, epic. I'm sure your knees were a little exhausted by the time we got to the end of it there. It felt a little repetitive, too. How many times did this poor man need to explain that he had mud put on his eyes? And particularly in this time and place where we're very consumed with all things medical, It seems like mud in the eyes is not going to be a recipe for healing anything. But nonetheless, that's where we start. It's a reminder to us that Jesus the Christ, who came among us as one of us, came in a very tangible way, in a way in which there was touch. Touch. Something that just seems beyond the pale now. Have you noticed it? I'm sure you've been out and about, out on a walk, on the sidewalk, and people are very carefully now moving out into the street 
to give people space on the sidewalk. Jesus is often touching people that society says he shouldn't be touching. It would be as if it was today and we made a point to walk right next to people that we didn't know on the sidewalk. Jesus is among us as one of us touching, being near. And not just touching and being near, but healing. Think about that. There's all kinds of touch, and it's not always healing or welcome or wholesome. Sometimes, in fact, it is even an issue of of harm towards others. This story could have been any number of ways. We could have heard a story of healing. We could have heard a story where someone is ignored. We could have heard a story of violence today. But today's story is about Jesus. And as people of faith, we know that it is therefore going to be a story of inclusion. It's going to be a story of returning someone to wholeness. It's going to be a story of healing. Now, there's a couple of other parts of this story that I think are important. The question initially in running through this text seems so out of date. Why was this man born blind? Did he sin? Or was it his parents who sinned that caused him to be born blind? And this seems like such an archaic understanding of how the world works. And in many ways, it is. But let's maybe use a more current phrase. What did I do to deserve this? Right? It's that eternal human question. A question that we always ask ourselves when something goes wrong. We might think even as a nation, what have we done to deserve this? We think of people all around the world, the people of China, the people of Italy. We think of all kinds of places where people are looking to heaven and saying, what did we do to deserve this? In the midst of all of this crisis, we understand that Christ is present among us in a way that gives us hope and healing. A sense that we are called to this work of hope and healing as well. Perhaps in this moment it's a calling to space and giving ourselves room. A sense that we need to be kind to one another as we learn new routines. And to understand that as the days blur, there might be anxiety and weariness and a loss of community. This morning, I had an interesting revelation. I got on my bike and was in my driveway and heading out, and I was all in my my uniform, not the robe, of course. That's awkward on the bike. But as I was heading out, two of my neighbors were in their cars and heading somewhere as well, and they both looked very intently at me. And I don't know if maybe there was a little bit of concern of, is their church still operating? What's going on? But it occurred to me that it's kind of cool that they saw me on a Sunday morning and thought he must be going to see a group of people, a community. And while that's true through the window of the computer here, it's not true here in person. But in our hearts, we know that we are bound together in a communion that brings us together in the life, death, and resurrection of Christ and gives us hope even at times when that may feel a little elusive to us. The last thing I wanted to mention is in regards to the first reading. The first reading today challenges us, I think, in our current context because it discusses leadership, the leadership of the king, And who has the kind of leadership that is the leadership necessary for the moment? Now Samuel is going down the line and looking as to who God is calling into that place. But I think in this day and age, there are times in which we have a lot of angst about leadership. 
But the good news is, is throughout this whole wide world, there are many amazing examples of leadership. Leadership in truth, leadership in hope, and in science, and in fact, and in a future where humankind can engage in community in a way that is healthy and whole. Let us be a part of that leadership as well. So as you think of the reading that we have here today, we are not being tested because of some kind of failing on our part. But we know that in the midst of our testing, Christ is present with us in a way that brings hope, community, and healing. And just as the sun rose today, we have hope in today and tomorrow. The second part as we move into this week is to look towards leadership that brings truth and hope in energy towards healing and wholeness. Not just for some, but for all. Amen. Please stand as you're able. <clears throat> Let us confess our faith using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. 
he descended, he descended to, to the dead. dead. On the, the third, third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father. And he, and will, he come will come to judge, judge the living and the dead. dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the, the Holy Catholic Church, Church the, the communion of saints, saints the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Amen. Turning our hearts to God, who is gracious and merciful, we pray for the Church, the world, and all who are in need. God of insight, raise up voices in your church that are often silenced or overlooked due to age, gender expression, race, or economic status. Hear our cry, O oh God. Listen, Listen to, to our, our prayers. prayers. God of insight, empower us to care for the land and all living things that dwell in it and beneath it. Hear our cry, O oh God. Listen, Listen to, to our, our prayer. prayer. God of insight, bring peace to all people and nations. Anoint leaders who seek goodness, righteousness, and truth on behalf of all. Help our political leaders to govern us wisely with the well-being of all your people foremost in mind through these troubled times. Hear our cry, O God. Listen, Listen to, to our, our prayer. prayer. God of insight, you care for our needs even before we ask. Come quickly to all who seek prayer this day. Be with all we name in our hearts or out loud now. Hear our cry, O oh God. Listen, Listen to, to our, our prayer. prayer. God of insight, strengthen and support all the doctors, mm. nurses, physical therapists, nutritionists, and all who tend to human bodies and souls. Be with all those that do essential work to keep our systems running. Be with all those that rely on food banks and shelters. Show us how to relieve hardship in these times of global crisis. Hear our cry, O oh God. Listen, Listen to, to our, our prayer. prayer. God of insight, you call out to those who are asleep and awaken them to new life with you. We give thanks for all your saints. Join us together with them as your children in this world and the next. Hear our cry, O oh God. Listen, Listen to, to our, our prayer. prayer. According to your steadfast love, O oh God, Hear these and all our prayers as we command them to you. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. 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 The peace of Christ be with you always. And also, also with, with you. you. Let's take a moment and share that peace. You may be seated for the offering. I wanted to mention three ways that you can give this morning. Of course, a check in an envelope with a stamp always works. Uh, if you're using your phone or a tablet to follow along in the bulletin, you can click right there in the bulletin under offering to give a gift. Or you can open a new window in your browser and find the give a gift button and give an offering in that way as well. At this point, we will receive the offering and listen to music. Amazing grace, how sweet a sound that sings. Lost, but 
Stand as we're able.
Let us pray. Praise and thanks to you, holy God, for by your word you made all things. You spoke light into darkness, called forth beauty from chaos, and brought life into being. For your word of life, O oh God, we give, we give you, you thanks, thanks and, and praise. praise. By your word, you called your people Israel to tell of your wonderful gifts, freedom from captivity, water on the desert journey, a pathway home from exile, wisdom for life with you. For your word of life, O oh God, we, we give, give you, you thanks, thanks and, and praise. praise. Through Jesus, your word made flesh, you spoke to us and call us to witness Forgiveness through the cross, life to those entombed by death, the way of your self-giving love. For your word of life, O oh God, we, we give, give you, you thanks, thanks and, and praise. praise. Send your spirit of truth, O oh God. Rekindle your gifts within us. Renew our faith, increase our hope, and deepen our love for the sake of a world in need. Faithful to your word, O oh God, draw near to all who call on you. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, to whom, with you and the Holy Spirit, be honor and glory forever. Amen. 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 Our, our Father, Father in heaven, heaven hallowed, hallowed be your name. Your, your kingdom, kingdom come, come your, your will be done, be done on earth as in heaven. heaven. Give us today our daily bread. bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial, and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Now is the acceptable time. Now is the day of salvation. Holy God speaking, spoken, and inspiring bless you, unbind you, and send you in love and in peace. Amen. Amen.
A couple of quick reminders before we wrap up here. I wanted to mention that you should be checking our website regularly as we are continuing to add online programming. For instance, the Sunday school that happened this morning before worship at nine o'clock. There's a number of things happening along those lines and we wanna make sure that you're aware of them. We also encourage you related to worship to take pictures of yourselves worshiping and send them to us. Make a point to check in on Facebook or other social media platforms as well so that we all know who is gathering. As we finish here, we'll have a few more minutes where the live stream will continue if you wanted to add something to the chat window in way of greeting. We look forward to seeing you next week. Go in peace, feed the hungry. Thanks be to God. <laughs>